We are back with Jonathan Kane, lead keyboard player from the band Journey. So we left off, we we're talking about your faith mm -hmm. and you as a kid had such strong faith. You saw your dad pray, he put that into you, Catholic school, you wanted choir to be boy. a priest. I was a choir boy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I declared it, you know, and uh, then this fire happened, you know, in 1958 where I watched 92 of my classmates die and three nuns, mm. uh, December 1st. You were there, you escaped. I escaped, I got out, and but it was still, um, surely the Lord would bring the fire truck, you know, and I kept, well, Jesus won't let this happen. You know, I had this little Mickey Mouse watch and it's mm -hmm. 20 to three and I'm like, come on, where are the fire, where are the fire trucks, you know? Well, the fire alarm wasn't wired to anything and they were late in the phone call when they finally made, there was all this confusion about call the fire department. Why wasn't the fire department just there? You know, they're two miles away. And so I was like, you know, uh, just devastated. And you have said in the midst of all the success you had, there was that emptiness, almost like a missing Oh, hand, yeah. Right? Oh, and, and it got, you know, and, and sort of being on the road and, and life's distractions and, you know, trying to keep journeying on, you know, up with the wheels on, you know, all the different singers we had, you know, you just lose your way. and and. Life gets too loud sometimes, you know, and you get too wrapped up in the business end of it and you forget where it all comes from. So it wasn't until I met Paula, you know, my wife, who had the good news for me that I could stop running from the Lord is when I really, it hit me. I'm like, ah, she knows. So tell me, okay, Paula White, yeah. a really well-known evangelist in the States, you met her on a plane, didn't know she was a pastor, didn't know, that, as you said, that women could be a pastor, yeah. which, you know, in some churches they can. Oh, no, right. Uh, and tell me about that conversation. You know, I, I, I saw she had dropped a book in the aisle and it looked like, like she was a psychiatrist because it was called Calling Into One. It was about relationships. And I thought, you're not a, a counselor, are you, or something? She was like, no, I'm a pastor. I'm like, oh, you're not. You know, and I, I was working on my memoir at the time uh, on my laptop, and and I and I, so I just had a question for: her. Is it possible to love Christ the way I loved Him when I was seven? And she's like, you know, looking at me like, yeah, for you, uh huh. I see it on you. You know, you're deep. You're deeper than you think, John. And you don't have to run anymore. And you know, you should consider it. I said, I just don't know how to start. How do I begin? You know, what do I do? So she gave me some scripture, uh, a couple of, you know, things from the Bible. And, and uh, then it was just like a, a long distance relationship. She, I would see her stuff online, you know. And uh, then finally, you know, my marriage kind of fell apart. I knew it was going south, you know. We didn't have God in it. It was like, uh, I always put God first, you know. Um, we just sort of lost that whole thing, the intimacy kind of, the road, it's the road and in decisions and she wanted to live her life a certain way and I didn't get it, you know, mm. and I was, so I wanted out. So I had her email and, and, you know, asked her if she was dating anyone and we started dating, you know, and I found her to, to, to be the only woman to really hear my heart, to speak to the king and me. Um, and she led, she led me back to God, you know, she led me to some great play, uh, men of God uh, in Ghana. So I met her spiritual father, Archbishop Duncan Williams, Nick Williams, and he, uh, I asked him if he would baptize me. You know, I said, I need to empty out. I need to start again. I need to repent. And he did. And something changed there. There was a massive amount of prayer. They pray so intensely in, in Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. It's really yes, amazing. They yes, they do. And, and intercessors came over, Paula and I, and then the Lord showed me I was going to marry Paula. And I was like, okay. And you had said you'd never get married again. I said I'd never get married, and I said I'd never go to Africa. <laughs> and you should I've been, never say those things. I know. I've been to Africa seven <laughs> times, actually have ministered there with her. Uh, you know, and now I'm, I'm part of the music ministry of Paula White Ministries. I, she, when she You preaches, do worship music now? Uh -huh, I've got uh, two albums, uh, What God Wants to Hear and Unsung Noel. And uh, I'm, I have a third one I'm going to release. Uh, so... You know, I just love it, and and uh, I play f behind Paula's sermons as she preaches. You know, I bring cinematic sort of outlines to her to her message, and uh, I just flow in the spirit, and it's it's a wonderful thing. 
it's so cool to see you return to the faith of your childhood. And I hope that people watching will pray for you mm. and, and on this new journey that you're on yeah. and that yeah. it continues to go deeper and you continue to inspire people. You wrote your life story and your new book, Don't Stop Believing. You have a new digital album coming out, The Songs You Leave Behind. People can get that at JonathanCainMusic.com, mm. Amazon, and, 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 iTunes. And iTunes. And, All uh, over. And we have uh, signed uh, books at uh, Premier Collect PremiersCollectibles.com. Uh, of course, uh, DSBbook.com. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm the Jonathan Kane at Twitter. Uh, you know, I've got a great family. My kids are, uh, are growing up now, and, you know, they're proud of their dad. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for thank coming today and sharing a little me. bit of your story. People thank are going to have to read the book to get the rest. Read right? the book. Okay. We'll be right back.